all for coming. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Chris Talbert. I'm the marketing manager for SunPath. And uh, we really, this, this seminar kind of, we were lucky to, to be able to do it. Uh, a brief conversation with Martin Soulsby at another event. He said, hey, you know, why don't you, you know, work out another program and we'll give you a slot. And so we, what we figured is um, at SunPath and, and most manufacturers, we do the best we can. Obviously, it's, you know, we're a, a for-profit venture and we want to sell new rigs. But we also are aware that a rig is an, an, an impulse buy. It's not something you just, you know, pick up. And new gear isn't always an option for everybody. You know, I work in this industry, and you know, I, you know, I can appreciate that this stuff's expensive. So we we realize that by supporting the used gear market, we're, we're supporting ourselves as well. So when someone calls or sends us an email, and says, "Hey, um, I'm looking at Javelin number serial number uh, three two seven eight five. It's a, you know, it's for sale at my DZ. Can you give me some history behind it?" And we you know respond and say, "Well, it's built for these canopies, and it's built for this this size." Uh, this size body. If you send me your measurements, and so we're, we're you know we're really just you know funding future customers by supporting the used gear market. And as we've been doing that, oh nice. As we've been doing that, I've come to realize that there's there's a lot that, that jumpers don't know about harness fit. You know what are, what do the different terms mean? What are, what is a yoke? What is the main lift web? And you know if it's how do I know if it, if it's not right? How do I know if a rig is sized for me if it fits me correctly? And I realized further that uh, there. Although generally harnesses fit, you know, it's, it's, it's really a, a comfort thing, there, there, can, there can come a point where a, an improperly fit harness could be a safety issue as well. So I put this seminar together to try and educate folks and, and to, you know, BPA was gracious, gracious enough to give us a second slot, so we wanted to fill it. So what we're going to talk about today is uh, the, the first couple things we're going to talk about is the components of, har the components of har harness size. So we're going to discuss the four components of har harness sizing. We're going to explain how measurements become a harness size, what all those numbers mean when someone's wrapping that me measuring tape around you and they're sticking measuring tapes all, you know, all up in places you didn't know you had places. We're going to discuss harness fit and how it affects comfort and safety. And we're going to explain how packing and wearing the rig correctly can also have an influence on comfort and safety. So we're going to jump right in with the first component of harness size, which is the yoke. Let me uh, stand over here. So you guys might want to, if you, if you want to move down some. So the yoke, and a uh, when uh, I put that, the, the little joke up there, yoke or yoke, uh, we get it spelled all, you know, we get it spelled different ways all the time in emails. And I have no idea why they call it the yoke. I, I didn't name it that. That's, you know, talk to someone much older than me. But the yoke in, in, a, in a rig is generally defined as the distance around the shoulders. What we, uh, and, uh, so in this particular rig, in this Javelin Odyssey, it will be the distance from chest ring over the shoulder, around the neck, and back down to the other chest ring. And the yoke, the yoke affects a couple of things, but w when a yoke is too large, you'll, see, you'll find that the rig slides side to side, you know, the, the upper harness sli slides side to side. You'll find that no matter how tight you have the chest strap, it, almost to where they're touching, the rig is still loose. Then when the, uh, the bruises, when you're a student, and Allie, I'm glad you're here, because it's generally, generally something that happens to girls more than guys, is when you're a young jumper and you find these bruises on your, your shoulders, it's generally because the yoke is too large and all of this movement, you're just, you're, you're moving the rig across your shoulders back and forth. When the yoke is too small, uh, I probably should have found maybe a, a British reference. I don't know how many people have seen the, the movie Tommy Boy, the fat guy in the little, the little coat. But it's, it's challenging when the rig, when the yoke is too small. Just imagine taking a jacket that you're trying to wrap around your body, and you'll, usually you'll see that the, the shoulder straps are stuck out here on someone's, uh, some, like on the balls of the shoulder. And finally, the yoke size is going to, believe it or not, is going to influence deployment handle placement. So you see, you see the, lo the longer this distance is over my shoulders, the lower this deployment handle is going to be. So most, most manufacturers uh, have different size yokes. At SunPath, we've got five sizes, O being the smallest, A, B, C, and D. And the di generally, the yoke measurement comes from, is a combination of your height and your chest size. And what we're trying to do is be, trying to be able to get you to put this rig on Wrap it all the way around your, your, your chest like a jacket and still be able to get the, the, the main deployment handle. Does that make sense to everyone? Any questions? I wish it would get a little hotter in here. That would be great. <laughs> Come on. So main lift web. The main lift web, uh, believe it or not, most people don't realize 
that on a harness without range, what we call a standard harness, like an old student rig or you know the first generation harness container system, the, the main lift web is one piece, there's actually two pieces of material sewn together from the top of the reserve risers all the way down through the main lift web, through, through the, the rig and to the end of the chest, or I'm sorry, the end of the leg straps. It's all one piece. And actually the, uh, the main lift web, sorry, the main lift web being the, the, length, the length affects your position in the harness. Uh, when the, when the main lift, lift web is too long, you'll find yourself sunk down, almost, you're almost sunk down in the harness and the chest strap is, is up, in your, you know, up in your face. And when the main lift web is too short, you'll find that you know, as you're standing in the harness, you'll feel that pinching on your shoulder. You, know, you, you tighten the, the rig up and you're ready to jump. You'll feel the, the, it's like you're being pushed down from the shoulders, from the crotch <coughs> through the shoulders. And um, when you have just, um, one of the things we've experienced at SunPath quite a bit when it comes to harness fit and adjusting harnesses is the, the ease, you know, how, you know how, how easy it is it to adjust the harness. And when we have the, the single piece main lift web, just the standard harness, all we'll do is where the, where the, the, the laterals are, are sewn down, we'll just unpick it and move them up and down and you know, that adjusts the, the length of the main lift web. With the, the chest rings, or the hip and chest rings, obviously we're just gonna, it makes it a bit more complicated, there's more work involved. We're just gonna replace that piece in the middle. But the main lift web, and the, the main lift web is derived from three different numbers. It's generally your height, your inseam from across the floor, and at SunPath we use a, sta a static number of 20, that's how we, we use height, minus inseam, minus 20. Like I'm 70, 70, uh, 73 inches tall, I've got a 33 inch inseam, so whatever that works out to, I think it's 19. Is, is my main lift web length. And the, uh, the length of the main lift, lift, lift web affects the hip ring placement. So the hip, we want the hip ring on the hips. The length of the main lift web affects the hip ring placement. What's that? I'm sorry. Main lift web right here. Yeah, the, just right here. Yeah, the vertical bit, sorry. Uh, the, the length of the main lift web affects the hip ring placement on the vertical. So the longer the, the main lift web, the lower the hip, the hip ring's gonna hang the shorter the main lift web, the higher the hip ring is going to be. So the lateral, or the laterals, it says how much do you weigh? So a guy like me, obviously I'm a, you know, I've got a little, little, I'm a little more MAN than most, so I'm going to have a longer lateral than say Thomas, Greek Thomas here, who's a nice skinny guy. The lateral, although it's often referred to in the plural, is only one piece. And the lateral is the strap that runs from hip junction around your back to the other hip junction. Laterals, <coughs> laterals being, excuse me, sewn to the main lift webs. When the laterals are too short, and this is probably something most guys have seen if they've ever tried on a smaller rig, is when the laterals are too short, the first thing that happens is the, the hip junction is back here and the, the handles get you know, kind of stuck back in your armpits. And so that's why it says, where my handles, you know, too short and where'd your handles go? And why are they so hard to pull? Because now you've taken the, the emergency handles You've got them back here in your armpits and they're at this odd angle where you would normally want your emergency handles out here in front and be able to pull straight down. Now they're at this odd angle and you're pulling straight back and you don't, you don't quite have the leverage to get, a, to get your cutaway, cutaway and reserver cord pulled. Excuse me one second. Sweat like a Schmitz. I mean, that sounded good, huh? So, uh, actually, sorry, we're not quite done with laterals yet. So, too, too short, and where did your handles go? Does anybody have any, any experience with that? Does everyone understand what I mean? You put, your, you put the rig on, the laterals are so short that now the, the handles are, are back here under your armpits. You can't see them, and you're pulling at an odd angle. It's not, not a very safe situation. Laterals too long, and why is my head over my, or my rig over my head in free fall? And that's, you've seen those pictures, especially with used or rented gear where the rig is moved back away from someone's back, if, especially if they're on their back or in a sit, the rig moves back and up over their head. And that's from the laterals being too long, no matter how tight they make the rig, it wants to move away from their back. Does that make sense to everybody? Any questions? No questions? Well, that's good. Oh, and uh, sorry. And the lateral, lateral length affects the hip, the hip junction or the hip ring placement on the horizontal. So what we're talking about here is the lateral length will affect the hip ring placement horizontally or 
the, the placement around, around your waist. The, the lateral being too long brings the hip rings around front. Lateral being too short puts the hip rings back behind you. Any questions? Nice. Am I the only one that's sweating like this? Yeah, yeah pretty much. I don't do this very often. I'm, I'm, I'm way better at freelancing, but I couldn't do that. So leg pads, not leg straps. We hear this uh, probably one of the first things that we hear when someone, when someone gets a used rig, they say, yeah, it fits great, but the leg straps are too, too, too long or too short. Reality, it's not the leg straps, it's the leg pads. The leg pads, generally on, on most, <laughs> most manufacturers, you'd be surprised to find out that the leg straps, vary, the length of the actual leg strap only varies slightly from model to model. It's the length of the leg pad. The leg pad, like on a Javanasi, comes from the thigh measurement. And qu very quickly, you'll see that when the leg pads are too short, they don't meet. And you have the, the leg strap up against your, your, your skin. And the leg pads being too long, you can't get the leg, pads, uh, leg straps tight enough. And you find that the, the rig is too loose. Believe it, uh, leg pads should overlap just three to five, three to five centimeters. And a lack of overlap can disguise incorrect hip ring placement. What I mean by that is the leg pads wrap around your, your, your thighs. If the leg pads are at this steep angle, then I can't get them tight. And you, you think that they're too short. Rea the reality is this hip ring is too high. Does everybody see that? So when the hip ring, when we bring the hip ring down, the length, of the, the path around your thighs is much shorter, and therefore you can pull, pull the leg straps tighter, get the leg pads to meet. You guys got that? Well, I'm fucking bla blazing through this. I didn't just drop that F bomb either. Uh, ready, Tom? Yeah. Main bag orientation? You guys want to come up? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. So we get this, uh, probably this is probably, th this, this bit is probably one of the biggest questions we get asked at, uh, at boogies and demo events is why, where, how do I put the main bag in the container and why? And you see it, uh, we see it all the time. Packers, they're in a hurry. They put the main bag straight down in the container and someone, somebody somewhere said, uh, well, I called SunPath and they told me it's okay. No, you didn't. We, we didn't tell you that. You, you might have called SunPath, but we, we didn't tell you it's okay. The grommet, the grommet in the main bag should be against the bottom of the reserve. You want to go ahead and get there, Tom? While Tom's doing that, we'll talk about why. Uh, the initial energy of the, the deployment, if the grommet is on top, so when we open up the container, if we see the grommet where the, where the bottle comes out of the main bag, if the grommet's on top, the initial energy is pulling straight up. And what we, we get what we call a witch's hat, or it can, it, what, we can, what can happen is as you're pulling the bag off, it can snatch the bag so fast, it can cause line dump and the, you know, the bag comes off the, off the parachute. What we want is we want to think about, it's the locomotive effect. Obviously this is happening in split seconds. We want to think about is the bag is, the first, first thing that happens is the bag is set up vertically and then leaves your back. As the bag leaves your back with the grommet up, it's leaving too fast. It can, it can, it can pull the bag off the parachute. You getting there, Tom? <laughs> Another reason for the uh, for the, the bag being rotated rotated uh, 90 degrees is the the rig uses this flat surface to uh, for friction on the closing flap. So if we have the bag grommet, if we have the bag grommet up. We also have this bit of this bit of bridle here, so we won't have the, the we won't have a nice flat surface where, this, where the, flap, the closing flap tucks over. Hey, you probably got a, a too big of a main in there, doesn't you? I'm going to say that because I'm struggling. Yeah. Right. Take your time. Yeah. Okay. You okay? yeah, keep going. All right, so when we're, when, we're, when we're putting the bag in the main container, grommet against the bottom of the reserve, line stows against the bottom of the container, one, one easy trick is, as you saw Tom do, pull up on the pull-up cord and rotate the bag back in. The last bit is the, the main container and the main bag. Think of putting the peg in the hole the right way. The main container is a rectangle, as is the main, main deployment bag. So now you're putting the, the peg in the, the hole 90 degrees off, and it's, it's not going to fit correctly, which we're going to 
as soon as he gets there, we're going to talk about closing loop length. All right. Let's get to closing loop length. So uh, cl closing loop length and why we do it this way. The, um, the closing loop on the Javelin Odyssey and in, in most rigs, also the, the pressure on the main pin, obviously the number one thing is premature deployment. Nothing premature in anything is never good. So we're <laughs> finally, <laughs> you guys are killing me. <laughs> I'm sweating like I'm jumping rope in the attic. So the, 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 the length of the closing loop uh, provides, number one thing, is pressure on the main pin to, to, to allow to keep the main, shut, the, main, the main container shut. The C-flap relies on friction. So the longer this, the longer this loop closing loop is, the less friction we're going to have under this flap. You see, it makes sense? So if these, as this opens up, we have less friction to, hol to hold the main container shut. If um, a lot of folks don't know that you guys come on up here the top of the closing loop there's a, on the back of this flap the top of the closing loop should be in the, the stitch for this velcro there's a small box right here put the top of the closing loop there and you're at the right you're at the correct length good googly moogly what's that what's that all javelins yeah and all, you'll find you'll find all this information on our website stumpat.com so one of, the, one of the big reasons, a lot of folks come to us and they're like, man, I, I, I've tried and tried and tried and I can't, I cannot get, using that length of closing loop, I cannot get the bag in, in the container. Generally what that means is we haven't filled out the corners of the bag here. So what we'll recommend is give it another shot and when you have the parachute in the long fold, just before you S-fold it, make it just a, just a small amount wider than the bag and you'll find that it fills out these corners ni nicely and uh, remember, your packer wouldn't appreciate it if you did that to them. So when you see that your packer is changing the length of your closing loop, tell them, hey man, that's my rig, not yours. Stop doing that. Knock, knock that junk off. And uh, Thomas, you want to be my, uh, you want to be my, my model here, buddy? All right, putting on your rig. Thanks, Jeff, here, buddy. All right, stop where you are. So we're going to do the chest strap first. Yes, really, we really mean it. The reason we're going to do the chest, you do the chest strap first, is think about where the where the, rig, the weight of the rig is going to sit. Do we want the weight of the rig sitting on our hips, or do we want it to sit up, sit up here on these muscles? So we do the chest strap first. We do a couple things. Go ahead, tighten it up for me, bud. All right, so chest strap first. Now we've got, just think of the rig as a, go ahead, give it a little, another tug there, buddy. There we go, just, just, just leave it be. So think of the chest, the, the rig as just a big rucksack or a backpack. If you were gonna go hiking for the day, you get your backpack full of your stuff, water, food. First thing you do, you put your backpack on, you're gonna get high up on your shoulders, tighten down those straps, and off you go. And we're doing the same thing. We're getting the weight of the rig up here on these shoulders to, to bear the weight as opposed to on your hips. Now go ahead and do the leg straps, pal. They don't have to be perfect. All right, so let me get on the side. So we, we've got the shoulder straps parallel. We've got the inboard, the seam of the shoulder straps inboard of the shoulders, which might be counterintuitive, but it's actually gonna give you more range of motion. The more you get that jacket wrapped around your, your chest, the more you put those ring covers here on your pec muscles, the more you're gonna have range of motion in your shoulders. Turn around and face me. Also on deployment, now we're being set up by our body not the shoulders. Just rem at every jump, you're, you're falling 120 miles an hour, you're, you're horizontal. When, that, when you let go of that pilot chute, you're being raised vertical. Do you want to be raised by your body or do you want to be raised by your joints? Just you know, think about that laying on, if I were laying on the floor right now, you guys were to pick me up, I'd rather you pick me up by the body than by the, jo by the joints. And uh, make sure the leg pads are overlapped, which, which they do. So the ideal, put javelin eyes, yeah, the ideal fit, shoulders up, Tighten the chest strap, and it's just going to sit there on your shoulders. Tighten the leg straps, and you'll have you'll have a good fit. Any questions? 
I'm glad this is last because uh, no questions? That's it. Thank you. <laughs>